This podcast was recorded live in the Purple Room Studio. Should we start the show? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome oh, to the Stream Void wow. Podcast, episode 162. Holy guacamole. <laughs> That's crazy. Religious experience guacamole is happening. Yeah. I am Mikey D, and of course, across from me is Curb Stomp. Hi. You can find us everywhere under our respected moniker. You sure can. You can. Uh, and you are listening to the Stream Void Podcast. This is a show about life. And video games and everything, everything in, between. in between. And speaking of everything in between. Yeah. How was your week? <laughs> it was fine. I was at the warehouse all week, almost all week. And being at, they don't, everything in life has to be secret at the work. <laughs> what? They never tell you anything. It's oh. always just like, I don't think it's a secret, but it's like, a just like, ah, oh, no. whatever. Psh. Communication channels are yeah, terrible. Is so, what, what do you mean? I knew that on the Monday that I was going to be the only one at the warehouse because they were going out of town to pick up something. Oh, and it was uh, a like all sort of they bought out like some fixtures or something from oh. the store. So they load up that. Anyways, that's not exciting. So they come back Monday night and I'm just talking to them, whatever. And then just as an aside, throwaway comment, he's like, oh, I'm not going to be here. Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, we're going up to the other stores. And I was like, oh, wow, good thing you told me now, because I would have come to work here tomorrow, and then I wouldn't have been able to go to my other work at the store, because I would have <laughs> had to be here doing this warehousing stuff. So thankfully, they said something, but it was literally like when I'm leaving the warehouse. So I'm like, oh, I should go to the store tomorrow rather than Wednesday. And oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up there, That's guys. That's amazing. Yeah. So anyways, but it was fine being alone at the warehouse, you know, just doing my thing. I mean, I'm basically alone there anyways. Yeah. We don't really, you know, he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing and then whatever. So I was like that for um, the whole week, basically. Listen to a lot of audiobook stuff and podcasting. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Pretty good. Um, yeah. That was it, basically. Nothing exciting. Eh? No, nothing exciting nothing at all. Exciting. I mean, you know, no, nothing really. Just making skids. Well, that was the other thing too, right? They didn't tell me they were going to the other store. So when we build their skids, we want them to be as nice as they can be, mm -hmm. as high as they can be, so they fit on the truck and as full as they can be, because we have to we set ship them and it costs whatever hundreds of dollars to ship a skid. Yeah. We want to make it worth our time, right? So I spend all this time making these skids, probably you know, an hour building them nicely, and then they get back on the Monday, and I'm like, oh, that skid, I can fit a little more on it, and then we'll wrap it up. He's like, oh, we'll just wrap it up now. It's fine. And I just was like, what? This is how it came <laughs> up that they're going to the other stores. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to go up there. We'll just, we don't have to, we're not shipping it. I was like, well, why didn't you fucking tell me this <laughs> so I didn't spend hours building these nice skids? I could have got so much more done by just building some shitty skids. Yeah. So anyway, they have a truck they're taking up then. Yeah, big truck, cube van. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have our own truck for sure. So, and it just wasted all this time building these skids. <laughs> what a good, what a good bunch of communicators you got. I mean, there. whatever. I get paid either way, but yeah, it's yeah, like I sure. could have done more stuff. Yeah. You know, but you could have been more efficient. I mean, it's you know, it doesn't end up affecting me in any way really but i could have you know done a lot of other things that needed to be done so yeah for sure whatever <laughs> whatever dude whatever man uh, but yeah other than that yeah i my my good friend she has her daughter working 
we've been doing like we have this bulk crap that we get. Yep. Like. We have big. Have I already said this? Uh, you, I think you mentioned something about her coming in okay. to do. To she do continued to do that. Things. Yeah, and it was smelling like mad garlicky. But she's so socially awkward. She can't like. She couldn't figure out how to use the microwave at the warehouse. So rather than asking me, she just ate her lunch cold. How do you not? Well, it's an old ass microwave, dude. <laughs> like at first, I couldn't figure it out. Is it one where you have to like input the power level each time? Yeah, you have to like choose the t- the how high you want it to be, but you don't you don't know what order you have to press the buttons in. <laughs> yeah, so it was a pain, but yeah, that that makes sense then. But she just ate her lunch cold rather than asking me how to use the microwave. That's weird. Yeah. Kids these days. Yeah, basically. I mean, but she's like almost twenty. Kids these days. So that, that's that's still a kids these days. Uh, yeah, acceptable age and it's just like she could barely ask me to like move the box for her because she can't lift these boxes they're so heavy <laughs> oh can you move this on the table yeah okay fine no problem no worries if you need anything else just ask <laughs> so just go ahead just reach out just uh use yeah. your inside voice yeah exactly and say words so anyways she's a, yeah. i guess for some people it's not that uh that easy to <sighs> anyways i uh, we're kind of I kind of want to build the store where people don't actually have to say anything. They can get all the information they need, like right out front. And it's like there. Yeah. But I just where they can understand. have like minimal staff interactions if they want, if they're, you know, if they're that socially awkward. I just don't understand how you get that way. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're just not socialized. I, I, I guess when it's they're prob- children. Well, that's probably what it is. Whereas like when you or I were a kid, it'd be like, um, your parents would just be like, okay, go buy your, you want a drink? Here's the money. Go yeah, buy it. Go buy it. <laughs> now it's like, oh, buy, mom, buy me a Coke. I don't know how to ask for a Coke. So <laughs> that's probably what it is. I mean, I like, was. Do you, do, okay. When you were a kid, did you ever get the note from your, well, I don't know if your parents smoked, but did you ever get the note to be like, it's all right for you to sell my son's smokes to bring me home. <laughs> no. Yeah. My uh, my father smoked, but, you know, he didn't live with us oh, yeah. when I was when I got to the age where I could actually go out and do that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So he would uh, he would get his own smokes. Mm-hmm. No, I uh, I remember doing that when I was a kid and that was a thing that would work. I just have a note from your <laughs> yep, mom. No, from your like, mom. Sell him some uh, like whatever. I don't even know the name of a brand of cigarettes that we Players sold. Kings Classic no, Lights with they menthol. Were, no, <laughs> they weren't players. <laughs> no, they weren't players. There's something else, but <laughs> but I remember doing that when I'm like, you know, seven, eight years old, going to the gas station and buying all this yeah. shit. So I was uh, I was a shy kid growing up. So I mean, I guess uh, I was shy too, but I still, you know, had to do stuff like that because if yeah. I didn't do it, then <laughs> nothing was happening. I was not a, you know, I didn't, I was not an out outgoing child. Yeah. Well, I didn't talk to people. I don't I didn't talk know. to people now. Like if I'm, I mean, it's not like, you know, when you're like out and about and then all of a sudden someone will strike up a conversation to you with yep. you and I'll be like, what the fuck are you on, buddy? <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. I don't do that. I do that. You talk to people. I talk to people. Oh. If, I, if I'm like, hey, you got really cool hair. I'll be like, hey, man, that's some cool hair. But do you continue talking with them like they're your pal? If they continue the conversation. Oh, my yes. God. But if they don't, then it's like, fine. Yeah. I'm not shy about talking to people. I just don't like it. <laughs> like when I hear people talking that don't know each other in when I'm waiting somewhere, yeah. like in a lineup, I'll be like, oh, my God. That's awkward as frig. Well, it's just like, oh, thank God they're not talking <laughs> to me. Not that I can't because when they do, I do talk to them. But I'm just like, oh, <laughs> no, thank you. I'd be like, hey, you beard. What do you think? <laughs> Hey beard, hey you bearded hey, hey, fuck. Beard. Hey beard, yeah you, yeah yeah. Get over here. What do you what do you get into this conversation? Yeah, we need a third opinion. Thankfully, I just have my <laughs> earbuds in, so I don't have to yeah. talk. I'll usually be I, like, uh, sorry, can't hear you. <laughs> I just don't leave the house. If I, I mean, if I don't want to talk to people, I don't leave the house. I never want to talk to people <laughs> that I don't know. It's like I know enough people already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need to know you. It's yeah, fine. Thank you. God, I'm going to need to know a lot of people soon. <laughs> yeah, that's your fault right there. <laughs> yes, my fault for bringing, for wanting to bring the most premium gaming experience to, yeah. to town. Yeah. Keyword, Frank, is premium. Premium, they say. That means expensive. <laughs> uh, it's going to feel expensive, but it's not oh, going to be expensive. Oh, I see. We've got some, we've got some interesting 
interesting plans coming okay. up, which I won't say anything yet about. But it's coming. We did just release our Barks newsletter. Oh, wow. And so if you're on the mailing list, you would have gotten it. I sure am not. No? No. Did you do the... Do the uh, I did. Yeah, you're on the mailing list. Okay, I'm going to go unsubscribe yeah, real yeah. quick. <laughs> I'm sure I got the email, but I don't look at my email. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, does anyone look at their email? Uh, some people do. I don't. I got thousands and thousands of emails. <laughs> like, who the fuck? I just I just cleaned out my inbox. Oh, my and God. And then I unsubscribed from all the things I didn't want coming into my inbox. I'm like, yeah. ah, I don't care. Uh, you need to start sending out those TikTok updates. Yes. Not a fucking email, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the TikTok updates will be coming as soon as uh, as soon as that funding is secured. Beautiful. Yes. Um, but yeah, it. that was it. Sorry. Yeah. That was it for work. Good. What about you? <sighs> work went by so fast. Oh, nice. I, I don't even know what happened. Oh, it, was perfect. Just, it was just it was Monday and then it was Friday. And I was like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? We yeah. uh, negotiated. We're in the process of negotiating multiple contracts mm-hmm. with the same uh same uh contractor yep just on different projects uh we had to lay everybody off Mm -hmm. except for one guy oh my god (laughs) everybody so you're the only guy left well it's just the office staff right now and one guy oh yeah that sucks yeah uh this work's been really crazy Mm -hmm. like the boys the boys they were hoping to get some more work down on the island yeah but apparently the construction's not done yet so oh, now yeah. they got to wait. I'm like, oh, God, come on, man. Exactly. I don't want. So what are they doing? Just relaxing? They just have to relax. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they get... we gave them an ROE back in December, so they can still claim mm-hmm. EI, but it just sucks. Yeah, yeah. It just sucks. They're all the boys, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's one of the big problems with being friends with all the boys. Like, exactly. It, it's, Sorry, it I have to fire you. you. <laughs> it, it affects you a lot more than, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're not close to these people. Oh, speaking of the boys, I should say that if I want to talk shit about the fucking Blazers, I'll talk <laughs> shit about the Blazers whenever the fuck I want. OK, <laughs> you're on notice. OK, <laughs> that was a uh, message Mikey T got about yeah, me gotta... talking shit about the Blazers last <laughs> last podcast. Yeah. So all, all the work boys there, they're on the Patreon and they always listen on Monday because yeah, yeah. that's the day you go to work. Right. Yeah. And I get a message at like, I don't know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock when, on, when the, they're on their way out. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> <laughs> I will shove this Patreon so far up your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Talk shit about the Blazers. The Blazers are our <laughs> local WHL hockey team. Yeah. Major junior. Yeah. So anyways, they they uh, they have low production values <laughs> and I stand by my statements. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he's he's such a big fan. So. Wednesday. I sent the boys down to the island and they come back. They did a 10-day shift, come back on Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, Wednesday is when the Coke got just pooped on. The Coke of Hell is our, our highway here. Yeah. yeah. Highway Highway 5, straight from Vancouver. Highway from Hell. Highway Hi- through Hell? Highway through Hell? Yeah. That's what it, isn't that the show? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's been on the highway through Hell quite often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought the whole show was about just the Coke of Hell. No, no. It's about uh, a couple, couple oh, of Oh, okay. Highways. Anyways, the Coke of Hell has been on it. Yeah, the Coca Hell has definitely been on it because yeah. it's super high mountain pass and it's just slightly steep spot, spots. <laughs> slightly steep, yes. Yeah. And it gets dumped on by snow all yeah. the time. And so the boys are coming into Hope, which is right before the that's the that's the turnaround zone. Like you go to Hope. Yep. And that's it. And Hope is where they filmed Rambo. Yep. They're not was it Rambo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rambo. No, it's called First Blood. Yeah, First Blood. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't even called Rambo. Anyways. And they're like, okay, we're in Hope. And I'm I'm looking at the highway cams. I'm like, you boys want to get a you boys want to get a hotel and just spend the night and come yeah. back Thursday. And and uh, he's like, uh, no, nope, there's a certain WHL team playing tonight <laughs> and I'm going. <laughs> oh. And, and the, like you look at the highway cameras and it's just like tr- like at the summit, just backed up oh, just yeah, yeah, all yeah. the way back. I'm like, holy crap. Are yeah. you sure? Are you yeah. sure you want to do that? And he's like, yep. Got to see him. Got to see him. Oh, my God. You have season <laughs> tickets or something? Yeah. yeah. Season oh, tickets. my gosh right insanity i know beauty <laughs> that's cool yes yeah. i haven't been to a blazer game in god since covid i haven't been to one since like 2000 something oh my god dude because my dad had season tickets back in like 92 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 93 prime time dude bro very prime time that prime was when time. like that was know. like winning the championship <laughs> winning the memorial cup yeah and- back to back 
future NHLers <laughs> and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yep. crazy. Yeah, that was like the Darcy Tucker, the Drew McGinley days. Oh, that's more like mid nineties, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It was I was time. thinking more like Daryl Sador and like early. Oh 90s. yeah, yeah. That's Mark yeah. Recchi. Mark Recchi. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we hockey talk. Mark Recchi way. Yeah, but apparently, mm-hmm. Aaron Keller is is like one of my dad's like. Uh, the son of my, one of my dad's like really good friends. Okay. Who living out, lives out in River Shore. So I like was chilling at their house all the time when I was young. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It was uncle, uncle Marv and nice the Kellers. Nice. And then he went to Japan to play hockey. Nice. Cause you know, Japanese. Yes. That's what you do. <laughs> That's what you do for sure. Cool. Yeah. Work. That was it. Uh, we got to launch a lot of cool ideas for the hub. Nice. We're hoping there's a spot. We might open up on the North Shore again. Okay. Well, see, you can't keep teasing me like this here, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you keep telling me, oh, yeah, North Shore. I'm like, perfect. I can go there. And then you're like, that's nah, going to be downtown. Well, I guess I won't go that often. Well, the, the, yeah, we went to the one downtown. We were like, oh, 1,600 square feet. Let's just take it. It's beautiful inside. Let's just do it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we contact the real estate company. They're like, oh, yeah, at least. I'm like, mm-hmm. ah, great. Great. Thank you. That's okay. awesome. But that liquor store mm-hmm. just down the way there. Not there anymore. Which liquor store? Uh, God, what was it called? Where is it located? Uh, what's that pub that's there? Pub and liquor store combination. That's just just down by the Seven Eleven. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called, but I know what you're talking about. So that place turned into an angry otter, and they moved to the new building. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. by the the high the turnoff to Halston. Okay, so that's twenty five hundred square feet. Okay. And is tore, it is? Yeah. They tore wow. everything out of the inside. So it's all open. So like the whole building? No, no. Just the just the uh liquor okay. store section. Okay. Because it's uh it's actually a separate building. Oh, you know, they're, they're like connected, connected though. No, there's just a there's a little walkway in between the two buildings. Oh really? They're not actually connected. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh it's twenty five bucks a square foot, mm-hmm. mind you. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit it's a little bit pricey, but mm-hmm. uh it's it's within doability. Okay. That's that's a word. Doability. 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 I like it. Did we talk about the other building that was up the hill? Well, yeah, because it was the one that another gaming business failed in. Did I tell you how much it cost? No. Too much. So way too much. We were hoping it was going to be like 20 bucks a square foot. Double that. Yeah. 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 So they want $37 a square yeah, foot yeah. plus 10 bucks in uh, other fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like $47 a square foot. Yeah. That's eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars a month in rent. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's yeah, so yeah. expensive. Yeah, but extremely prime location. But it absolutely makes sense why there's nothing in there right now. Yeah. Uh, though, mm-hmm. we are getting a fat burger, and it's going in there. Oh, really? That's so <laughs> far away from me. Though. <laughs> I know, but at least we'll be able to get delivery. But also, fat didn't a fat didn't another burger place fail in that location too? Wasn't that where Five Guys was? No, no, Five Guys is way way up the hill by the, uh, the oh, Rexall. Okay. Oh, that's by where the, I thought this Aberdeen. was. Where was this other location? This is by the Mr. Mike's. By the Mr. Mike's. Yeah, there's Mr. Mike's, there's Donut King, there's Mr. Lube. Oh. It's right across from Tumbleweeds. Oh, yeah. Tumbleweed Toys. Okay. Okay, okay. And there was a Menchie's in there and the Ruckers okay. and Haven. All righty. Yeah, that, we're getting a fat burger, I guess. So I fat. I think. Pretty it's primo a it's location a for it. Yeah. I mean, right by the college 37 bucks university. square foot plus 10 so yeah right by the university <laughs> yeah god it's so expensive yeah it's so expensive oh yeah well that's like in the that's the new downtown <laughs> yeah it is yeah because downtown is cracker gross. crackerville it's it, and the the rent down there is so cheap yeah that's because it's like a slum <laughs> it's like, here you go 15 bucks a square foot and like yeah cool what's the problem oh there'll be a bum pissing on your door every yeah. morning every once in a while yeah by every once in a while I mean, every, every once in a while every day yeah, yeah. <laughs> every once in a while yeah every once in a while on the daily maybe ever you know maybe you get an hour or two with no urine but <laughs> yeah anyways but that little strip mall uh you know uh in between second and third downtown downtown yeah no wait is it second and third i can't remember i, I don't know but it's where the there's the post office uh god what else is in there i don't think there's anything else in there now. i don't even know where it is anyways yeah that that place has some units in it and they're like 16 bucks a square foot but they're all like offices oh yeah which is not what we no. need which no, is no, unfortunate no. you need a window <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> windows and doors and, and uh, open spaces that mm-hmm. it lets the air flow through nicely. Exactly. What we were hoping for is one of the places up on Laval, because there's like a whole block of buildings that's just empty. But the zoning is IS-1, which is like light com- light industrial. Yeah, Laval's a, ch- that's a terrible location, though. But it's got the good sizes of places. But the location sucks balls, dude. Ah, there's worse locations. Nah, I don't know, dude. And no plus, one's driving down that road and being like, oh, look, a gaming store. That's, uh, yeah, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking but for you, people. We're not going to get that many people off the street. I mean, that's going to be like, oh, a gaming store. But you don't think that something like busy, like 8th Street would be more foot traffic? It would be more foot traffic by for people sure. driving by and being like, oh, shit. Whereas Laval, it's jack shit. Yes. Yeah, okay. Anyways. But <laughs> so that, thrilling, that's that's where advertising and then all that comes in. Thrilling Kamloops uh, realty talk for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super thrilling. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Like I said, just flew by. Nice. It's now Sunday. Yeah, I know. It sucks. <laughs> Why is <laughs> the work suck. week five days and the weekend two days? Who yeah, we need, this to go to, we need to go to fours and threes. How about we just go five days? Days off and work two days, and everyone gets a living wage for working two days. Oh. There'd be zero percent unemployment. Yep. Instantly. We'd do it. We've done it. <clears throat> I've solved it. Once uh you know, once robots are more mainstream. Roblox? Robots. Oh, robots. Because if we don't have to have, you know, all the people doing the menial stuff yeah, that robots can do. Yeah, but you get then like, it would work. They could have robots doing the warehouse work at my place. Exactly. They're never going to pay for robots <laughs> because the one time investment is more than it'll cost to pay for me to work there for my entire life. Yep. So. Yep. But that's the only way is that we can go to a five days off, two days on kind of. Okay. Kinda They'd also have to change the minimum wage to be like $100 an hour. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Because who's going to do all the all the menial tasks? Robots. Exactly. Robots. Ribbits. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I played some games. Did you? Yes. What'd you play? I played shooty games. I can't believe it. Right? I can't That's believe so it. That's so weird. That's so weird. So we played, I played a lot of Apex. I actually streamed Apex last night. Why? I just felt like it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Briscoe was like, hey, let's play some Apex. So I was like, sure. Okay. And of course, been playing Helldivers. Oh, occasionally. Yeah. I've heard of it. And then Tarkov mostly. Tarkov. Tarkov. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Excuse me. Right? It's crazy. Uh did that, you that, enjoy so your time? With I, those I things? have enjoyed my time in all those things. Okay. I've, yeah, I've just been waking up thinking about Tarkov. I'm like, oh man, be back in Tarkov. Okay. Play some more Tarkov. Yeah, it's still, you know, it's still Tarkov. Yeah. I end up with a lot of equipment, then I lose all my equipment, and then I wait for insurance, and I have too much equipment. Mm-hmm. And then that's uh yeah, that's Tarkov. I did go on a tear on one customs run. Okay. I uh I actually destroyed a level 41 Chad on interchange. A level 41 Chad? Yeah, like a, yeah, just straight up Chad. What does that mean? It means he had just crazy gear. Okay. And stuff. But I think we we speculated he might have disconnected because oh. he was just standing there in the dark and I one tapped him right in the face. Oh, yeah. And I went over and I was like, "Ah, oh, this I thought he was a scav." Yeah. He was just standing there. And I went over and looted his body I'm like, "Holy crap. Level 41." It's crazy gun, crazy armor. So he like, finally reconnected and was like, God damn it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I took all his stuff, X filled right away, and then tried to use his, his gun in another raid. And, and lost like, it immediately? No. Uh, no, it went on an absolute terror. Uh, okay. <laughs> I had nine kills, two of them PMCs. Oh my gosh. It was great. It was great. And then, yeah, there's one. This This won't make any sense to you at all. Okay. But... You can play a scav, which is just like a, a random NPC you spawn in a place yeah. and you have, you know, some loot and you try and get more loot. And it doesn't really matter if you die because you don't really lose anything because you didn't bring anything in. Yeah. But I spawned into interchange with a tank battery. A tank battery? And you battery? can't get tank batteries unless you go to uh, reserve because okay. it's like a, it's like a military base. And tank batteries are extremely expensive and extremely hard to get. And what do you need a tank battery for? I can't remember. There's a okay. base upgrade I think you need it for, or or there's a quest. And how do you might I ask how you carry a tank battery? In your backpack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's big and it's heavy, and you can't like after you put it in there, you like your stamina just goes right down. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, anything. how much does it weigh? Like a thousand pounds? Yeah, it's really heavy. Yeah. It's really heavy. But it's weird. I'm like, I spawned as a scav with a tank battery in a mall. Just the random loot. Just the most random. Yeah. So you exfilled immediately. I exfilled immediately. I was like, all right, see you later. Yeah. 
It was wild. Crazy. Absolutely wild. You hit the uh, lottery. I did. Yep. Uh, we got to silver three in Apex. GG's. GG silver three. Yep. But yeah, everyone's everyone got rank reset. So, you know, you start your game and you see the you see the top squad and it's just like predator, 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 predator. Oh yeah. <laughs> like great. This is this is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just Apex, you know. Yeah, classic Apex. Classic Apex. I got too tired playing Apex. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I got to stop because we're just going to start sucking. Yeah. And then I just, you know, I switched over and played some Tarkov. Classic Tarkov. Classic Tarkov. And then it was like 1 a.m. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed. (laughs) Crazy. Late night game and session. Late night game and session. Nice. Yes. How about you? I played a little game called... Yakuza, the <laughs> Japanese mafia. I mean, like a dragon, infinite wealth. Uh, and, and little game should be in quotes. Yes, little game. Little huge game. <laughs> it's a little huge game. It's still, I don't think I've found anything new too much now. Like last time I talked about it, I'd already found Dondoku Island. Yep. I'd done the Sujimon, like the Pokemon thing. I'd done the crazy delivery taxi game. <laughs> yep. There's been other little mini games that I found like there's a it's not a mini game, but you there's like a recycling center so you can go clean up the beach, <laughs> pick up garbage and stuff. And then you turn in the garbage and you get points to buy like prizes at the yeah, beach. That's funny. So I've done that. Um, what else has happened in the game? I lost my character of um, I lost Kiryu. He went back to Japan but Adachi and Nanba had come from Japan to Hawaii to mm-hmm. visit me. But then since Nanba was a nurse, he went back with Kiryu because Kiryu has cancer and he's dying. Oh. I know. Very sad. Uh, so now my party is Kasuga, um, Chitose, Tomizawa, and Adachi. And it's pretty good. I'm liking it. I've unlocked all the new jobs, I believe. So in this game, you've never played... You only played Yakuza Zero. Yeah, Yakuza is the only Zero is the only yeah. Yakuza game. I so play. in that one, you could change your style. So yeah. you'd be fighting beast mode and yeah. stuff like that. So the jobs are kind of the similar thing in this game. And the way you unlock them in this game is you go on a like a Hawaiian tour. So you go to the like <laughs> you go to you go to the um like uh, Aloha tours, mm-hmm. and you can choose your like event you want to do, which will be like oh you want to go have a water fight, a water gun fight. And you'll go and you pay a thousand dollars and you go for like a day trip and you play with water guns and it inspires them (laughs) to think about a new job. So like the water gun one inspires Kasuga to become a desperado and you're like a old west gunslinger and you have pistols and you wearing like chaps and everything like that. (laughs) So I've done all those. I've unlocked all the new jobs and they're pretty cool. And I was like, okay, I've got everything. I can level these up. And then I was continuing on with the game and i got to a new store that i'd never been to and i was checking out the weapons you can buy and i'm like wait a minute i can buy weapons for jobs i don't have unlocked yet because there's old jobs that are not in the game one is called the idol which is like a japanese idol right and you can buy the microphones for the job and i was like oh i haven't unlocked all the jobs i'm like how the fuck do i unlock these other jobs (laughs) so i'm like god there's even more for me to find here but uh, yeah, I'm I'm loving it. It's so fun and just doing everything in it. Ah, there's so much to do. And I want to do it like I want to complete all the side stuff before I beat the game because in the Yakuza games, there's shit that you'll unlock that you would never use or you never need to use once you beat the game. Mm-hmm. Like in Yakuza 0, if you complete the management property management story by defeating all the five billionaires you unlock like the legend of or the dragon of dojima i think it's called that the like most powerful fighting style oh oh, interesting but we never unlocked it no we beat the game without it yeah and then at the end when you play like you know premium adventure mode or whatever it's like well i don't need i already kill everything like in two seconds (laughs) i don't need a more powerful fighting style yeah we've been like oh this has been cool for me to fight like you know one of the bosses with or whatever yeah so i want to do all that before i get to the end of yakuza i mean infant what is it called like, <laughs> like a, a dragon, dragon infinite, infinite wealth, wealth. <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm loving it a lot it's so good yeah very good i don't know if i unlocked any other things 
in it really. But uh yeah. I went on I tried to go on another date in the game using the <laughs> dating app, but it was like a it was a catfish. It was oh. a, it was an old guy when I Oh got no. There. Yeah, pretty sad. Oh, speaking of old guys catfishing, yeah? we'll talk about that a little bit later. Really? Oh yeah. Better Not really it- catfishing, but you know, old guys. Old guys. Old guys pretending to be ladies. Oh, weird. Yes. Well, why later? Why not right now? Well, because it's in, it's one of the storylines. Oh, talking about. right. Okay, I I get what you're alluding to now. <laughs> Tune in later. Tune in next. Yeah, in, um, a, in a few minutes. Yeah, that was it for gaming, really, for me. Oh, very good. I mean, I played more Yakuza Like a Dragon, the prequel one. Yeah. Just on achievements and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I wasn't streaming, I was like, I'll level up my guys a bit, you know. <laughs> so that's basically it. Um, very good. I didn't watch anything. No. Do you want to know why I didn't watch anything? Because you're too busy playing Yakuza. I'm too busy to play in the Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. But I was going to watch something because oh. last week, Mikey T was like, have you heard of this show called The Creator? Oh, yes. I was like, oh, yeah. He's. I'm like, okay, on Netflix. I'll check it out. Whatever. So I went to Netflix. I'm like, oh, it's not here. What? Yeah. I was like, that's weird. Must have got removed already. That's like, a, how did we dodge? How, like, I thought it was new or whatever. It is. Yeah. So I was like, okay, weird, whatever. No big deal. I'll see if I can find it on soap today or something like yeah. that. I never did go to soap today or whatever. But then I was like on Disney plus last night. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, there it is. Oh, okay. It's on the wrong platform. Oh, I'm just a dummy. Yeah. Okay. I never looked on Disney plus, but it was literally like I scrolled down to American dad. I'm like, oh, there it is right there. <laughs> so I never oh. watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just a dummy. No, I thought a- that was a Netflix exclusive for whatever. No, reason. it was on uh, Disney plus. Oh, there you go. So I'll check it out. Uh, yes. Now that I know where it is. But yeah, I was just like, he just talked about it like it was brand new, like it's gone already. Like, what the crap? Yeah, I guess I just so, uh, it, I it mean, feels wh- like a Netflix exclusive because it didn't come to theaters, right? Yeah. Well, when you have also like three different subscription oh, yeah, streaming sure. things, they get a little oh, yeah. jumbled up a bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, I was just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch anything else. I mean, I did the movie stream last night and watched two atrocious movies <laughs> from the 70s and 90s nice what did you watch i didn't uh i was streaming so i didn't have it yeah there was in. a microwave massacre from 1979 <laughs> oh yeah which was very terrible but also had like the greatest ending of all time it was so stupid <laughs> and then one called it was called suckling aka sewer baby <laughs> What? And it's about a woman that goes to a abortion clinic slash brothel to have an abortion, but then the abortion is like mutated and it goes in the sewer and toxic waste gets on it, and then it turns into like a <laughs> oh big God. monster that's killing everybody. It was like it should have gone more to like the trauma style, yes, but it was like not. It was too serious for its that, own good. That sounds like yeah, a trauma style, uh, exactly. This show, but it was too serious for its own good. So it was pretty bad. Microwave Massacre was much better, even though it was way stupider. And like, as soon as you have a brothel slash abortion clinic, yeah. you can't you can't serious. No, you can't be serious. After well, that. and then they pull out the baby from the abortion and they're like, this is the world's biggest second trimester abortion. And it's almost a full grown fetus, basically. <laughs> and then they just flush, flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Freak, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was what so, the freak? it was so stupid, but then oh it got like way God. too serious. It wasn't serious in a good way either. It was just like <laughs> yeah. they weren't trying to joke it up, you know, when they should have totally been joking <laughs> it up. So the hell. And then that microwave massacre was like everybody had a joke for everything they said. Like everything was a joke, even though they weren't funny. They'd be just saying like their lines were all jokes. Yep. It was like a like a vaudeville comedian act, basically, just like, <laughs> take my wife, please. Ah! You know, just stuff like that. <laughs> so but it was some of the like just the scene when his wife is in the microwave and he opens the door and she's just like her. She's supposed to be dead, but she's just looking out at him like in the microwave. It was so funny. <laughs> sort of like giant microwaves. What it was hell? huge. Yeah? It was huge. And people would just get put in there. Dude, it was like bigger than an oven. Like a literal oven. It was huge. <laughs> this kitchen they had in this show was so stupid. They had four different ovens Ooh. and they were all labeled for different. Like this one was where the fillets go. This was the broiling one. This was flambe down here. It was very weird. Flambe? Yeah, it was the very, oven of flambe. Yeah, it was very weird. It was. Yeah, it was. 
It was interesting for sure. That sounds wild. And it was also like, you know, early, all like 80s. So it was just like, well, you know, this lady will be topless now. <laughs> of course. Like, you, you know, to. whatever. It's a, uh, you know. She went into, they were walking by a construction site and there's like the hole cut in the thing for you could look through to the construction yep, yep. site where they sometimes do. And she's looking through it and a guy sees her like bent over. So he's like going to be a pervert and grab her ass. So, of course, like when he grabs her ass, she's like, oh. And her boobs fall out of her dress through the hole <laughs> what the in, the, in the wall. And oh then the construction workers see it, see it, and they're running over to go grab them. And they she pulls them out just in time so they don't grab them, you know? Classic construction workers. Exactly. Just a bunch of booby grabbers. Yeah. It was something else, dude. Jesus. It was something else. It was like they knew they were not making a masterpiece because oh, they'd yeah. be like, for whatever reason, whenever something bad was going on in the house, there'd be like thunder rolling outside. Mm-hmm. And then the one prostitute that went back to his house, like was like thunder and then looked out the window and it's like all sunny and there's people running by and she's just like, oh, weird. <laughs> 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 a little, a little daytime, little sunny thunder. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know how it is. Exactly. <laughs> so I would recommend microwave massacre. Not so much suckling, AKA sewer baby. <laughs> uh, you know what I would recommend? Did 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 you watch anything? No, no. Okay, but then, I would recommend Patreon.com. Yes, that's what I thought. Forward slash Dreamboy yeah. Pod. <laughs> that's right. That is the only way to support this podcast with your hard earned dollary dues, and uh, you get access to some of our craziest content ever. Oh my god, it's true. so crazy. So true. So it, true it, and it so is, crazy. It is true. We put a lot of effort into our crazy content. All yep. three videos, whatever. It is. <laughs> Sure do. Yeah. <laughs> For as little as a dollar a month, you can get in there. You can support this podcast. You get access to the the pre-show content, the post-show content, and you get access to this podcast early on Sunday, the day we're oh recording my this God, podcast. Incredible. All right. And you get access to our Patreon exclusive videos where we tend to just taste test things and cook yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, soon. Hopefully soon, if, you know, my basement never gets cleaned up, twerking, we'll, we'll do some stuff. Twerking videos. We'll do some other stuff. Maybe some twerking uh, videos. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Maybe. I better start practicing. You better. That's right. Patreon.com forward slash stream void pod. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some news. Okay. Uh, y- y- you've heard of Willy Wonka, right? I've heard of him. You've heard of, uh, you know, he's a, a cho- master candy person, chocolatier. Yeah. Well, back in. A little bit earlier this year in Glasgow, mm-hmm. there was a, a Won- Willy Wonka inspired immersive experience that happened. Yes. It was a, a, a touted to be an amazing uh, romp for the family through uh, Willy's Chocolate Land or whatever it was. Yes. Was it, it was Willy's Choc- or Candy Experience or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So the implication was that it was like a Willy Wonka's Wonderland of pure imagination <laughs> yes. where it was like actually uh will a willie's uh horror land of pure degradation <laughs> <laughs> yes the website had all these colorful photos of ai generated craziness yeah and everyone was like oh my god this is gonna be amazing yeah and for you know 44 american dollar dues you're gonna be able to go was it 44 dollars or pounds uh, it look the article says 44 dollars okay so probably like 30 36 pounds something like that uh, and you could go and, you know, have this wonderful experience with with Wonka and his uh, Oompa Loompas. Yes. And, and it turned uh, out it was not good. It was it turned out not good. No, extremely not good. The photos for this thing are like, oh, you're in a warehouse that is brightly lit with all the warehouse lights. And there is a rainbow arch and some person yeah. cooking meth. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much just <laughs> the most budget thing you've ever seen um the first thing was like okay it was called the willy whatever willy's candy experience or something like that yeah so it's like first off you it's not obviously it's not official so like i gotta think part of it is on the people that were going to it you know? Yeah, I, I would think Wonka because Wonka is actually do they does Wonka actually make like chocolate bars and stuff like that? Well, I think it's more like the company licensed out the name Willy Wonka mm-hmm. from the original sh- like IP holders. Yeah. To put on their candy. Like if you buy nerds, 
I think they say that they're Willy Wonka's nerds. Yeah. But I don't think that it's actually made by Willy Wonka. It's like made by Nestle or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And they just sort of put the logo on it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. But it was also just like, just so low budget, no <laughs> effort, terrible experience that. If I would have been there, I would have been like, yeah, well, I want my money back because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> well, it turns out they are going to be giving everyone their money back there. They had a bunch of actors like somebody to play Willy Wonka, somebody to play Oopa Loopas, and then yeah. somebody to play the terror demon, uh, whatever the hell his name was. I can't remember. The what. Unknown or something the, like that? Yeah, The Unknown. Yeah. Great Which name. Is, I didn't even know that was a thing from Willy Wonka. I don't think it is. Maybe it didn't make it into the movie. There or are like that. whispers that because they wanted to have like an interactive experience with the storyline and stuff like that. And there are whispers that that interactive storyline was just made up by AI. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things I read is that the their, their script they got was just like AI baloney. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the whole idea was just like, let's see if we can just do a thing and get some money with a like terrible AI generated malarkey basically (laughs) yeah pretty much the actors showed up to set they were given costumes like an hour before they were supposed to go live yeah and they were like holy crap we are not getting paid (laughs) oh yeah they instantly knew that everything was going to go poorly and they weren't going to get paid but they were like let's do our best let's uh try and give these folks some kind of experience yeah that's nice of them to try but i would have been like nah Sorry, sorry, <laughs> dudes, I'm out of here. Did you watch the the TikToks from the, the guy who played Willy Wonka? No, I didn't. He was like, really? You're picking me to play Willy Wonka? I give off serious Oompa Loompa vibes. Like, what is going on? <laughs> the only thing I saw was the one where they were scaring the kids where the unknown guy came from behind the mirror. And I was like, God, this is like what you saw before Richard Ramirez kills you. <laughs> Like, this is a nightmare here. Yeah. And the kids are all like screaming and stuff. It was great. Yeah. That's going to be like the hottest Halloween costume this Halloween is dressing up as the unknown. The unknown. Yeah. Disturbing. He looked like Buckethead. Do you know Buckethead, the guitarist? Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. He looked like Buckethead without the bucket. <laughs> so apparently there was not a lot of candy to be had on this it's Wonka style adventure. It was just, yeah. they were saying it was like a jelly, you got a jelly bean and some juice. So again, I'm like, of course you got to wonder how, which, you know, they said they got a few jelly beans and a half cup of lemonade. Yeah. But like, is it exaggeration? And that could be exaggeration. I mean, for 35 pounds or whatever it was, I mean, maybe that whoever set it up just didn't, Give them a budget to do it. I mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. Even I looked at the like the production company or whatever that said it on their website. And even when I looked at it, I was like, oh, there's no way I would trust this company to run a like event that even comes remotely close to being good. Yeah. Because like everything on the website is like obviously AI baloney. Oh, yeah. So it's just like, oh, my God. I'd be like, sorry, son. (laughs) (laughs) No way to the Wonka Willie, the Willie's candy experience. (laughs) Sorry, son. Yeah. Um, There are. I don't know if they were intending it to be a scam because they actually held some kind of event. Normally, you know, in a scam, they would just take your money and run. It's I don't think it's intentionally a scam. It's more probably just like lack of um planning and forethought basically yeah or time where it's like oh fuck that's tomorrow right uh put up a paper mache rainbow (laughs) like we don't have time to decorate it all fully out it sounds like they had a dress rehearsal on like the friday before they went live if they only got their costume right as it went live it wasn't a dress rehearsal (laughs) (laughs) it was just a rehearsal well, they, they, yeah, there was a meeting. They were like, they had a dress rehearsal on the Friday. They but that implies they were in Sunday. costume when it says dress rehearsal. Yeah, it does, definitely does. <laughs> Which they probably weren't because they were saying <laughs> they got their costumes right before they went live. Mm-hmm. But, oh, man, I don't know. Like, haunted houses here are, <laughs> like, if you go to the haunted houses here, they're better than this experience <laughs> where you have to pay money to go do it. Yeah, you're just walking on the gray slab of concrete. Yeah. 
under a paper mache rainbow and some lab meth lab set up in the corner. Yeah. With just, it, with this poor Oompa Loompa in a sexy Oompa Loompa costume. Yeah. Just looking <laughs> so sad. Oh my God. I feel bad for them, but Oh yeah. They're just trying to do a job. And yeah, I mean, they were offered 500 pounds for two days of work. So that's pretty good. It's not, it's not, not, terrible, not bad, especially when, you know, you're in that kind of gig economy where you're looking for acting jobs and stuff yeah. like that. And they're not going to get any money. No, that sucks for them. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't think there's ever been anything like that here, really, that I can think of. Not to my knowledge. Even like regular businesses we have around here, it just they put in a little more effort. <laughs> like if you think of like what are the things that we've seen, like even the lowest budget thing we've ever seen, like. Like, what's the corniest thing we've done around here? Like uh, the blacklight mini golf or whatever. What a headache inducing, amazing yeah. adventure. Yeah. But even then you go in blacklight there and blacklight 3D mini golf. It's kind of like, ugh, this is like not that cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. As soon as you take the glasses off, you're like, mm, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, know. mini golf is already in 3D, so I don't know why they would have to call it 3D. Because it's like you have to put the glasses on for it to be 3D. Yeah, and then it is it 3D. I don't even know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, it I, just I, I, distorted your vision yeah. and made doubles of everything. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, you had a very difficult time yeah. hitting your ball because you didn't know where it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to blame the people that went to the experience, but I don't know what they were expecting. Yeah, I don't know. They were expecting their- a, a fun romp. I mean, not everyone can instantly identify AI art, especially well, when you're like blasting even, through. But even I don't know, just the name of it. Being like, this is the great value Willy Wonka experience. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's different too in like Glasgow. Maybe they have like really good fake ones normally. Like I'm sure yeah. there's been like a Harry Potter one that's probably been super rad that they've done and stuff like probably. that. Probably. So maybe it's just a thing that happens over there and they just assume, oh, it's going to be good because the, historically they've been good. Any other experiences have been good. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy, the the guy who played Wonka, he said something about the the producers of the place being like, oh, man, we got screwed over so many times, blah, 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 with all this stuff. And like, well, that's hard to believe. Yeah, that's hard to believe you waited and then still put it on. Despite the fact that, you know, all this stuff was going poorly for you. Yeah, that's that's a sign that you should maybe maybe not do it. Yeah, ah, they were just hoping they could just do it and keep the money and whatever. It wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be that big of a blowback. I mean, they said they're going to refund, I think. But- yeah. Yeah. Just because they said it doesn't mean they're going to do it. It's true. They could just say that they're going to do it and never do it. So. Yep. You got your, this is Willie's, you got, you got your Willie's experience right here. Exactly. <laughs> this was what we were advertising. See, and it, you know what? They imagined a world of pure imagination. Yeah. So, I mean, you had to really imagine it and it was good. So they, <laughs> yeah. they delivered on what they said. They absolutely <laughs> delivered. You had to use your imagination to even make it seem feasible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, uh huh, Epic Games, uh huh, large video game large, distributor, so large, the large, largest, super large, super large. There was a hacker group, uh huh, called uh the Mogulvich Mogulvich Gang, and they were like, "Hey, Epic, we got you, we got all your data." Yeah, and yeah, Epic's yeah. like, "Are you sure, bro?" So I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. you did. Are you sure you're in the right system? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these guys claim they've got login information and um. Passwords, usernames, uh, I think they said source code, passwords, e full name, payment information, source code, and many other data. It's 189 gigs, so not very much. Definitely not much. Um, and they're saying they're going to sell it or whatever. Yeah. Epic's like, we didn't get hacked. Um, there's no sign of us getting hacked. You know, it's fake, basically. <laughs> yeah, there's there no, and they haven't posted any proof. Yeah, so of, of material, and they're only selling it for fifteen grand. Yeah, so the a lot of the people are talking like that. That's just these guys are trying to scam <laughs> people that would buy stolen data by saying we have it, and then when you buy it, it'll be like old, whatever data that's been from other hacks you know <laughs> login information yeah, it'll just be a ton of hentai a ton of hentai 198 89 gigs of hentai yeah we know some with that many oh that's a small little crumb of their hentai <laughs> collection yeah 
but it's only 15 grand so that's cheap because usually they're asking for like they'd be like epic give us a million dollars and we'll turn it over and delete our copies of it or whatever yeah i guess they wanted to start small and see if they would fall for it i I don't know because that's 15 grand to epic it's like yeah well i think uh, yeah the uh they're saying that that's not what we're asking epic games for yeah that's what we're gonna post the 15 grand is like the down payment um no, the, they'll sell the data for fifteen grand, but you'd only sell it to someone if they have showed proof of their funds. So they have to somehow sh- prove to them that they'll have the money to pay for it once they've given their little free sample. Yeah, the free taste test. the The quote here is: "For those who are even more jerks, I would like to say that the evidence is private to minimize scams. People could use the samples to impersonate my group. That's why we show the evidence to people that prove they really have the money to afford it." So, do you think it's fake? Send me proof of it, of the $15,000 you got, and, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like they're just trying to pull a scam by pretending oh, yeah. they hacked somebody. Definitely does. Um, It could be real, though, I mean. Yeah. But they've never done anything. They said they've done a hack to go against Hyundai or something like that before. Earlier in the year, but this whole one just has no legitimacy so far yeah they said they hacked ireland's department of foreign affairs oh infinity it wasn't hyundai it was infinity um yeah so they people are saying they're just trying to scam buyers with fake data (laughs) yeah and they're they're using the name of some uh 77 year old who is dubbed the most powerful and dangerous gangster in the world oh really yeah where is he the gang what what He's a gangster where? Oh, that, they have a LinkedIn group page. The hacking group has a LinkedIn? Oh, wait, no, Ryan. That's just an article on LinkedIn. I was like, what? Oh, my <laughs> God. I was going to say that's crazy. Yeah. Simeon uh, Yodkovic uh, Mogilvich. Okay. Ukrainian-born Russian organized crime boss. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, he's like an oligarch guy. Yeah. What a guy. What a guy. Well, you know what? If they hacked Epic, they got my information. Yep, mine too. Because I put it in there. I sure did as well. Because I'm not afraid to buy something on Epic. No, me neither. I have bought things on Epic. I've bought two things. I've also maybe bought two things. Wow. (laughs) Couldn't tell you, though. Nice. Couldn't tell you. And a trillion free games. A trillion free games. If you're not on Epic, you're doing yourself a disservice. Exactly. 100% a disservice. So... Well, when it's, if it's led to be true, I guess I'll get my year's worth of, um, what is it? Uh, what do they call that when they do it? The, uh, like, um, the protection against your identity theft. They always give you that for free for a year. Oh, I don't know. Identity theft protection. Well, it's what Sony did when they got hacked. They gave everybody part of their thing. You got a year of identity theft protection whatever it is yeah which all i think it does is is like if someone does a credit check they send you a message (laughs) (laughs) uh and then uh, i'll take the five dollar store credit as well (laughs) yeah that we'll get (laughs) thank you epic i appreciate it very good yeah yeah i'm not uh i'm not too worried no if epic's not worried i'm not worried but the other like what what are they gonna get they're gonna get my username my hat password that's hashed Mm -hmm. they're not gonna have my credit card information nope it's like, okay. They know where you live. Oh, no. I know where you live. Oh, like, no. Not a big deal. I'm screwed. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, a, I'm a nobody, right? It's, uh, I'm not too worried. My information's no. been hacked before on other leaks. Yes. Sony. And I'm sure there's others that I can't remember. Yes. Tons. Yeah. I'll be okay. I'll <laughs> yes. survive. Uh, yeah, my pass, my username is available for purchase on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <Yeah. laughs> uh, last week we talked about a streamer. Was it last week? Uh, it was. A it couple. was. Recently. It was either. It was recent. We talked yeah. about a streamer named Kira Kitty. Yeah. Who uh, got egged in the streets by a jealous uh, woman? Woman. Uh-huh. Who claimed that she was seducing her husband through Twitch? Through Twitch by posting sexy pictures. S- sexy pictures, so sexy. And uh, you proclaimed that's, that's a, man, a man, baby. baby. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Didn't it turns you out, think so too? Yeah, I thought so too. After looking close, I'm like, that's a man. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely a man. It's a and man pretending to be a woman. And surprise, surprise, yeah. it was. It yes. was someone who worked for Kira Kitty who was just like trying to get this viral thing going. Yeah. Definitely a man. Yeah, there was just too much. Like, the whole video was fake. Because, okay, first of all, imagine you're walking down the road. Someone starts throwing eggs at you. What do you do? You, like, run away or you try to get away. You don't stand and stop and talk to the guy <laughs> yeah. about why he's doing it. <laughs> so that was fake. But then it was, like, the guy, obviously, it was a f- dude doing a high-pitched voice pretending to be, like, an old woman. Yep. Because it wasn't even, like an old man it was like a young guy dressed as like an old woman <laughs> yep. doing an old woman voice super fake right so i said it was fake right off the bat i th- i mean i can't be the only we can't be the only two people no, in the world that thought it was fake the, right the two only people because yeah any any close examination of the video you can tell yeah it's it's a dude so she said she filed a report um she didn't actually file a report but the police apparently um, want her to apologize for faking it. I guess it's probably because even though she didn't file a report, it got on the news and everything that they spent probably time and man hours and stuff doing it. Yeah. L- investigating it. Also, I mean, she did it in Taiwan, so there's different laws about stuff there it says she could face charges for violating taiwan's social order maintenance act <laughs> act which really sounds a lot like a like uh what would you call it like <clears throat> a, a behavior not upstanding or whatever yeah, sort of yeah. thing you know like not something we would have really in north america mm-hmm. sounds more of a sort of i don't know totalitarian sort of rule or whatever you know for sure so uh yeah she really fucked up here but i mean it worked (laughs) we i never heard of her and then now we're talking about her so 100 percent worked um it's just i mean they'll try anything to get view famous or whatever here get subs to her only fans does she have an only yeah she has an only fans okay well that makes sense in the article so it's like, oh, oh, you're seducing husbands, eh? I'm going to sign up for this OnlyFans so I can be seduced. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, allow me to be seduced, please. Allow me to pay you money to seduce me. Great. Yeah. Um. Just, anyways, they don't think it through. That's a lot of things where they don't think it through. Oh, they. I'm watching the footage here. You can see the footage of the guy taking off his little dress, putting it in a backpack. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a video here on the, like, Taiwan, um, Taiwan video, like news website here on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> and they show the footage she recorded of this guy pretending to be an old woman. And then they show the security footage of him, like walking away and like taking off his little woman outfit. Cause underneath he's just wearing regular like <laughs> jorts, <laughs> jorts. Yeah. Oh, they blurred out her cleavage on this. video. Oh, pretty crazy. So, yeah, they're interviewing her on TV here. She shouldn't have gone on TV. That's probably part of the problem. Ah, video is unavailable. Watch on YouTube. Yeah, that's where I'm watching it right now. Yeah, they got all this footage. So, obviously, the police spent time and effort investigating this. Yeah. So, wasted resources. Yeah, she could definitely uh, end up with a big fine or going to... Oh, they have... They see... Wow. They have the... uh, (laughs) <laughs> they had the dress and the outfit as evidence. <laughs> Get wow, pretty good. Get I like wrecked. it. Uh, hopefully she'll disappear <laughs> never to be seen again. Uh, probably. Wow, they are totally blurring out her cleavage. This yeah. is so bizarre. And they blurred out a lot of stuff in that video. How like uptight is Taiwan? That's so crazy. I don't know. I like it. Don't blur <laughs> out the cleavage. Come on now. <laughs> That's what we're here for. How are, we? Gonna, how are we going to know how she was seducing someone's husband without the cleavage? You got to go to her OnlyFans. Oh, shit. No, <laughs> I'm not going to go to her OnlyFans. I'll take one for the team. Oh, really? Wow. I won't. Okay. That's money that I'm not going to spend on that. No, she probably has a free OnlyFans. Oh, probably. We can do that can for science. The, uh, we the, do it for science. The paid OnlyFans, too. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sign up for an OnlyFans account. Ah, it's too bad. It's too bad. We could have done it for science, but you don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. 
Uh, speaking of something that uh, we're not going to do, but uh-huh. Sony did. Yep. Uh, Sony's going to lay off about 900 people, I think. 800, yep. 900 people in their workforce, which is about 8%. Well, I think it's Sony Computer Entertainment. Yes. Not just Sony overall. Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sony Interactive yeah. Entertainment. My apologies. Yeah, 900 people about. Yeah. And including the 900, they're shutting down London Studio. Oh. The whole thing, which I was like, oh, London Studio. I I mean, I recognize the name. What have they done? The only thing I could think of that they did was maybe they did this. Um, There was a driving game on the PlayStation 2 called like The Pursuit or something like that, which was supposed to be like Grand Theft Auto, but in Britain, it was very bad. I can't remember what it was called, but then I was looking at their list. It's like, oh, they did. They've done SingStar for like the last twenty years, basically. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, Erica, I just played this game. <laughs> this was the movie game that I just oh. played like two weeks ago, where it's about a girl's who her mom disappeared, and she goes to someone's trying to kill people that knew her dad, and it's a weird mystery sort of movie thing where it has multiple endings and different stories. But you can't like skip over scenes you've already seen. So if you want to replay it, it'll take a literal another hour <laughs> and a half to play through. So it's a bit of a pain. Yeah, they, it looks like they did all of the Sing Stars, all yeah. of the eye toy tracking stuff. Yeah. But I thought maybe I'm thinking of a different studio. Like way back in the PlayStation days, there was a studio that I thought was London Studio that did um, some sort of. Grand Theft I uh Grand Theft Auto um themed not themed but it was like an open world crime game in London uh The Getaway The Black Getaway Monday. that's the one yes The Getaway <laughs> yeah I thought so god I played the demo of that I'm surprised they stayed around this long <laughs> <laughs> So they the did getaway they did was bad. Singstar, and then they 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 did the getaway, and then they did Singstar Party, and then they did our toy chat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, was it called the Getaway Black Monday? Yeah, Black oh, Monday. The no, it's a sequel. Okay, so the 2002 one was done by oh Team Soho. So they did the sequel to the first one. Yeah. They were both bad. <laughs> they were both bad. Oh, yeah. The getaway was so bad. That was the last game Team Soho put out before they oh, shut damn. down. Oh, that makes so much more sense. The getaway was the creative director of the getaway was Brendan McNamara, who did <laughs> L.A. Noir. Oh, no. OK. It's all full circle now. <laughs> so the only game I ever played by them is, of course, the original SingStar PlayStation mm-hmm. 3. Yep. I played a lot of SingStar. And that's it. Yeah. There's also people cut from, um, I think they said Naughty Dog was getting cut down a bit. Maybe I'm misremembering that one. It just says 8% of their workforce, all regions, several PlayStation studios. It just says that anyone in the US, they'll be They'll be notified Monday, which was last Monday, I think. And in the UK, they're proposing close down London Studios, reductions at Fire Sprite Studio, which I don't know. Um, There's no mention of Naughty Dog. Yeah, on this thing, there's no mention of Naughty Dog, but I think there were maybe people from Naughty Dog. I'm not sure, though. Um, Next on the chopping block, Bungie. (laughs) (laughs) Poor Bungo. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks when people lose their job, but it's that's like every game company's done that recently. Yeah, it's it's a big thing. Everything yeah. is uh everything's happening. Still happening. reduction from like the sort of build up during the COVID times where they hired like everybody. Yeah. So hired everybody to pump out games. Yeah. And support the studios. But now, you know, gaming is uh, not as huge as it was in COVID time. Well, still huge. It's but huge, but there's no growth. Yeah. It's sort of leveled out after COVID times. Yeah. But I mean, it went up so much during COVID. Yeah. Ridiculous amounts. It's crazy. But also like it's probably because during work from home, I think I mean, I would love to work from home, but I have to imagine productivity is down at work from home. It all depends on what you consider productivity. If you consider, uh, let's just say actual work. actual working at yeah. your job at home productivity, yeah. 
probably down a little bit. Yeah. Though I find my productivity goes up a but, lot higher okay, because okay, okay. I can work at home on things. But when I don't have, you know, when I'm waiting for information, I can do other things like yeah. dishes. Well, that's the thing, though. That's you. But think yeah. about as someone else who would be like, I have stuff to do, but they, you know, I have an auto mouse mover going here <laughs> and I can go have a nap now. Yeah. So depends on the person, really. It definitely does. So it sucks for them, but it's just the way of the world. Everything. It's like business is so fucked up that way. Mm hmm. Where it's like you can't have a good year and then have a second good year. No. You have to have growth yeah. every year or else you'd fucked up. Yeah. But it's like if we made a $100 million profit last year, isn't a $100 million profit this year good as well? No. No. It's got it to be 120. It's got to go up. It has to go up. <laughs> so that's all because of shareholders yeah. and the stock market, which sucks. I think if the company profits $100 million, mm -hmm. you're doing good. Because that's pure profit. That's net, baby. Or is but, that gross? Uh, that'd be net, I think. That'd gross be is the total before. Yeah. So if, if you're netting that much mm -hmm. money, where's it going? Just into the coffers. Well, it's usually issued as a dividend to shareholders. Ah, uh, yes. But you know, that's why. That's why they need to make yeah. more profit. Because the no, shareholders that's what I'm want more money. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Greedy bastards. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Yes. And if they had no shareholders, that hundred million could go. Back to the employees. Back into the studio. No, I'm, give it to the employees. Yeah. You know Make what? Make the studio better. Let's go full communist. <laughs> let's do it. We we might as well. Yeah, let's do it. What's yours is mine, comrade. Hell yeah. But we got to be like legit about it. Yeah. We'll be at the top, of course. Of course, yes. And we will help. We'll have a little off. more than everyone else because we're at the top. Of yeah, course. that's how but communism we'll works. We'll spread it out, you know, <laughs> and it'll be like if you work in the copper, no, the coal mines. You'll get paid more because that's a shit job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a shit. The job. worst job, the more you get paid. Mm -hmm. So like in my world, number one paid person, the guy who cleans the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense Depends to me. On the toilet, really. No, any toilet. <laughs> yeah. Any toilet. <laughs> and if you if you have to clean Donald Trump's toilet, you get paid the most. I, I would think the guy who cleans the toilet at like sasquatch music festival that's oh, that's yeah, the highest bad. paid job right there yeah any bad. any music festival mm -hmm. toilet cleaner that's the highest job yeah you know and when then, you gotta like stir it around with a stick just to keep it in there yeah 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 yeah. that would be bad <laughs> but you'd get you'd be well handsomely rewarded <laughs> <laughs> yes disgusting <laughs> disgusting how gross are we pretty gross yeah uh speaking of gross uh -huh. twitch yes Find over three hundred thousand dollars for breaking law in yeah. South Korea. Uh, what is this law there? Breaking? So, do you remember a few episodes ago we talked about how Twitch was like, "Sorry, Korea, we're we're not going to be there anymore. We're getting out of tw Korea." Yes. So, I think it's because of some of their laws they have over there regarding stuff like Twitch, which is their law they're breaking was they they change. You can't watch vods anymore on Twitch because they're they're getting out of Korea. Yeah. So they've been slowly like rolling back. You can only r stream on Twitch in Korea up to 720p now. It used to be 1080p. Now it's 720p, which got them in trouble because the Korean government was like, why are you limiting the quality of streams here? And they were like, well, it's a trade secret. We're not going to tell you why. And then they turned off VODs because they're clearing out. Mm-hmm. So they find them 300k because it's apparently against the law there of uh, some sort of um, telecommunications act in Korea. Yeah, the Korean Telecommunications Commission. Yeah. Act and act. Yeah, it said they violated the local telecommunication telecommunications business law by undermining the interests of users. Yeah. Um, they were also fined uh, 50 million won yeah. for preventing uh, distribution of illegal footage. Which would probably be, I would assume, like... Any movies and yeah. stuff like that. Anyone 15 million stuff. won is like, I don't know, 10 grand or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's nothing. Crazy. 435 million won is 327,000. Yes. So this has got to be part of the reason why Twitch is getting out of Korea is just because of the local laws are just not good for them. But the other thing, too, I'm thinking like, OK, they turn off VODs. I wonder if part of Korea's laws is that you can't not have vods basically like that could be one of the reasons why twitch is getting out of there it's like we have to save the whole fucking country of korea's vods for like we're youtube or something like that <laughs> yeah, you know right? so they're like no fuck that we got to get out of here 
Yeah, it just says it's uh, the, the suspension of the VOD service violates the local telecommunications business law by undermining the interests of yeah. the users. And that's yeah. all it really says. Yeah. Uh, and this is on a Korean website that I I was reading it on in English, not Korean. Yeah. I can't read in Korean, obviously. Um. So, yeah, it's got to be part of the reason why they're getting out of Korea. Yeah. I um, so pretty weird. Yeah. I wonder if that's what it is, though, is they have to like re- VODs have to be available for people and they were just like we're not youtube we don't have the server space (laughs) like imagine how much server space youtube uses disgusting oh my god disgusting i mean you think of every 4k video upload that's like oh here's here's a couple couple gigs there you go couple thousand gigs and then it's just like well yeah if it's if it's raw do you think like there's just a guy at youtube that all his job is all day is just putting hard drives into servers that's <laughs> all he does all that's day literally just all like he does. Snap, snap 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 just like all right build the server put it up yeah next day build the server put it up there's yeah. there's five ten terabytes of server space let's move on to the next yeah just space. all day that's all, all, that's all day that's all he does servers. yeah it's crazy dude <laughs> yeah because uh, that the old content doesn't go away it's still there well you can when you find old content that hasn't been watched in a while you can tell it's old because YouTube will be like, oh, we got to find this video. And then we have to like get it off of like an old mechanical hard drive. <laughs> We're going to put the reel to reel together. Yeah. Again. So it takes a while to actually get it going. Yeah. And then it'll start playing. But it's like, <laughs> holy fuck. It's crazy. That's a deep storage. Oh, yeah. Big time. Compressed to like one kilobit. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty crazy. <laughs> Anyways, that's kind of scary about Twitch is that one day they could just be like, yeah, we're done. Yeah. We're good. We're done. We've lost enough money on this venture. We're out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's well within their rights to do. Mm-hmm. Is that they could just be like, "Hey, sorry, boys, we're out. Yeah. That's it. We're not making any money." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I don't know how they can make money, really. Like seriously, mm-hmm. any stream, I don't know how they make money on. It. I don't know because, like, even think like just watching my stream, right? Yeah. If I have if I have twenty people watching it. There's 20 1080p streams coming out of Twitch, right? How much bandwidth is that for just people to watch me, like dollar wise, you know? Yeah. And then think about it like when you have someone watching, like 200,000 people watching a stream. Like that's literally thousands and thousands of dollars <laughs> of bandwidth Yeah. for a stream. So they're not making that much on advertising, maybe on subs, possibly. I don't know. But to make thousands and thousands of dollars on sub revenue, you'd have to be getting thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of subs gifted. Yeah. So I, I'm looking at an article here and they're saying it costs uh, 5.1 cents per hour per viewer. Per what? Like per megabit? No, for, just, just per, per hour per viewer as, as a simple, uh, simple That's thing. That's it? Yeah. So 1080p. For four hours, for one viewer, costs 20 cents of bandwidth? I don't know, man. That seems too low to me. Yeah, that's uh, that's what they're saying. The, with Amazon Web Services, it's uh, for your first 10 terabytes, it's uh, 8 cents. Okay, for 10 terabytes. So in the first, like, I don't know, four hours of a day on Twitch, they're over their limit there. Not Twitch that they have sends a petabytes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. two cents per gigabyte as an average. Uh, What's this website you're looking at? I don't know, just some random website. So does they're, it look like doing, they know what they're, they're talking doing about? Math. It kind of looks like they know what they're talking about. Okay, but I don't like. There's like weird skating when you scroll. Oh, like it's got velocity when you're scrolling the web page. Velocity like up. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm gonna stop reading this because perfect. It's me. Um, <laughs> Anyways, Twitch. Yep. It's weird and wild. Weird and wild. Yep. Uh, I'm looking at this last thing, and you're saying Luden's fans? Oh, well, that's part of Death Stranding. That's part of Death Stranding? Yeah. All right, then. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Game Club. Yes. Each week, we play a video game. Uh, mm. We play a chapter or a segment or yep. a timed interval of that video game, mm-hmm. and then we talk about it 
live on stream. And yes. this is a game club, which means you can play along with us uh, and uh, contribute your experiences to the podcast. Yes. You can join us live on twitch.tv forward slash streamboat pod or on our one of our other platforms. Or mm-hmm. if you don't have time to make it live, you can leave your experiences down below. Mm-hmm. There is a link to the Purple Room Studios Discord where we are recording this lovely podcast. And there will be a forum post in there about yep. the game where you can share your experience. Yeah, what he said. Get in there and do it. Yep. And of course, now we are playing Death Stranding. This is episode two of Death Stranding. Yes. Uh, you are playing the director's cut on PlayStation 5. Yes. I am playing not the director's cut on Epic. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we played up to and including the 10th delivery. Yeah, which was a... we end, It was basically the wind farm. Yeah. The wind farm era of death stranding <laughs> yes the worst era of death stranding you think so I, I hate going to that wind farm yeah it's a bit of a pain it's it's because it's like you got to go down into a canyon and there's yeah. all the bts and then you got to come back up coming again, back up though is a little like, easier yes especially when there was someone built a bridge for me uh yeah so when i first started playing it it was like when it first came out maybe i wasn't online Oh, maybe. Because there was like nothing when I went through that area. Well, when you go down, there will be nothing because you don't have it on the chiral network yet. Even coming back. Yeah. There was nothing. Okay. But I guess, I I don't know, maybe I wasn't playing. uh, Maybe I was playing in a hotel and I'm not hooked up to the internet. Yeah, maybe. I could have been a thing. And that was back when, you know, we were first playing it on PlayStation 4. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's definitely a possibility. Or else just the ones that you hooked up to only place ladders and yeah. climbing, whatever the fucks yeah. they call it. Could be. But yeah, when we were doing the wind farm thing, there was someone who had built a bridge for both of us over the BT area. So coming back was like super Well, easy. the BTs aren't even there. Oh, um, they're not even there no, when you're coming back. No. Oh, okay. No, they're not even there when you come back. But going there and coming back, if you do it in the future, will be easier that way anyways. Yeah, for sure. I don't think they're there anyways. I would have thought it still would have had the like, yeah, BB would, would have happened. been going off pointing downwards a bit, but and it's not like the bridge is that high. Like, I think it would have been like you were at eye level with the BT <laughs> rather <laughs> yeah. than below them, you know? Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, the idea was we're going to continue heading west in America in this compressed map because we're already like a third of the way across America. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot about that and playing it again. I'm like, oh, oh, my God. We're yeah. like a third of the way across America. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I uh, you had previously done chat orders four and five, which was the smart drug delivery. And oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, meeting, of course, your mother, who Sam has conveniently forgot about. Uh, yeah. But, you know, yeah, I got to get introduced. And yeah, it's that that whole part is just it's so awkward. Yeah. So, um, and I'm trying to understand why they, he wrote it like that. And I'm just like, ah, maybe well, he's partially got like translation, I think. Yeah. And I think it's just, he's got, you know, family issues. Like he left the family yeah. a while ago to be on his own. Well, it's, it's not like, so much. He forgot his mom. It's like, yeah. he forgot that his mom's president, but I, I thought it was more like, again, the game is telling you the player through Sam. Yeah. They don't want to spoil the twist because Sam knows my mom's president. So they have <laughs> I to was, be like, what does she want to do with me? <laughs> like, ugh. When I was watching this scene and going through it, I was really trying to rationalize yeah. that he didn't actually know. And I, I, just, I just couldn't come to the conclusion. So one in the mosh was watching me play it and I was saying that. And he said, maybe he's, he's like, maybe he doesn't know that his mom's president. I was like, well, yeah. how would he not know? Right. I, it, it all depends on how far, how long he left the company for. But uh, I mean, he's obviously in the company. This game opens with him doing a delivery in his gear. Yeah, right. So, so, so yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But also there is a little bit of storyline where he was not in the company for a while and yeah. is brought back in. Well, so. Obviously he has something he doesn't want to deal with them or whatever. He yeah. just, he's just like a, he seems like he's just a bit of a like wimpy wiener boy. <laughs> Frank <laughs> is trying to get in from outside. He's trying here. to get in from outside. Um, But he's like just acting like a petulant child. Like, I don't want it. No, forget it. America's done. <laughs> Get out of here, mom. Oh, yeah. It's not 100%. a phase. <laughs> 100%. It's, it's, yeah, it's just a real awkward thing to, for him to be just like a, a like teenager like that. Yeah, exactly. It just feels weird. Yeah. So I think it's partially poor writing and then partially translation that it's just sort of like 
he, like Kojima has a lot of interesting ideas. Yes. But like the sort of way they're delivered is not always the best. And also <laughs> the thing too is, is like he's at the level where no one can say no yeah. or say like, Hey, maybe you should do it this way. It's he'll just be like, no, this is the way it's going to go. Yeah. Especially if you look at like his thing that he had at the, um, was it the game awards? No. What was it at the state of play? Where he had his 10 minute Death Stranding 2 video. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like any other company would be like, we got to edit it down. It's got to be three too minutes. Long. <laughs> we don't need a 10 minute long video here. But because it's Kojima, he edited it together. Yeah. It's his thing. That's what it happens, right? Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, I, I, he's got a lot of interesting stuff going on for sure. Yeah. Sometimes the delivery is just a little <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So we of course your mother dies and mm-hmm. you take her to be incinerated and this is the first time you run into bts well that we've seen in the game yeah that we've I seen mean, in we've the game. seen them before like at the oh sorry we could see them at the very start yes of when he's in the cave with fragile because mm-hmm. they show them floating in the distance yeah, very yeah. vaguely but uh, this is the first real time where we sort of see them. We get to interact with them in a not cut scene kind of manner. Yes. Because we have to like walk back through. Yes. The uh, the BT filled area after yeah. we have, you know, incinerated our mother. Yes. And uh, of course, we had a little extra package to bring. And that was, of course, our bridge baby. Yeah. yeah. Who is way past his prime, apparently. Yeah. And malfunctioning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so which and it's weird because. That that's all. Well, you know, you go through the BT area. It's pretty easy. You just, you know, cover your mouth. Don't you don't allowed. have to really do that. No, you don't even really need to do that. But it's weird because you get back with your BB with the bridge baby. Yeah. And what's his face is like, oh, this BB was malfunctioned. You, you had to like incinerate it. We can't do anything yeah. for it. And then he's just like, oh, we calibrated it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of. Yeah. Well, and then like. He's up there at the incinerator and there's you can see the BTs are coming for him. He's yeah. just like, I got an idea. And it's like hook it up to himself, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. anyways. It's just a little weird. But um another thing that was said on the Discord is a, a side to this. I mean, when he's when he's talking to Hartman there, one of the things on the Discord you said is like, Oh, I went to the wind farm and his name's Jake Wind, like, oh god, <laughs> you know. And it's like, okay, yeah. well, the names are sort of like what their jobs are, much like Chandler or Shoemaker or, yep. you know, whatever. But then I was like, oh, yeah, like Hartman, he's the sort of medical doctor guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's Die Hartman, who's like sort of more of the military guy. Yep. And then I can't remember what the scientist guy's name is, but his name is something like that, too. Like the little yeah. dorky guy. Yeah. I can't remember his name either. It's like, oh, yeah, the names are kind of like their position <laughs> almost, you know? Yeah. So I, I keep the <coughs> I keep the discord open so I can kind of make notes of things that I found interesting. Oh, in yeah, the, yeah, in yeah. The thing, which is what I'm doing. Yeah. And there was one point where, you know, you get the BB for the second time. I can't remember if it's the second time or whatever, but there's a little like a uh, little cutscene, and the BB has connected with you and he blows a little heart bubble. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I never noticed that the first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. We finally have seen his BB's dad, I guess. We don't yeah. know. Which is played by Mads Mikkelsen. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we have no idea what's going on with any of the... like. This, what What's going on in the story? Like, we <laughs> who the fuck knows? Yeah, nobody knows. Yeah. It's like, okay, who are the characters we've seen? Fragile. We've got um, Sam. Mm-hmm. Hardman. Die Hardman. The other nerd scientist. Yeah. We've got Mads Mikkelsen. BB, we've got the president, and then we've got the president's daughter, we Amelia, ass- who's also Sam's sister. Yep. But it's like the president and the president's daughter are the same woman because mm-hmm. they're both, um, what's her name? Played by the same actress. Except they have the, they face scanned the old war version because she's that old. Yep. But then they just took old photos of her as young and recreated <laughs> yeah. her as a young lady. But the voice of the young version is voice of another woman. Yeah. And the old version was the voice of the real actress. <laughs> so it's just like, Oh my God, what's going on here? There's just so much weird shit going on. Yeah. And it's just like every time something happens in the game, 
It's like die hard been here. Yeah. I got to tell you about some other bullshit. <laughs> I know, I'm like just like, everything, shut up. Everything. I, don't, I don't care, man. They got to contact you about every little thing. Everything. Like, every time you make a delivery, you're talking to the people who made the delivery to you, and all of a sudden, oh, do I Hartman here? Yeah. Hey, and then Hartman this, slides this, this. in, too, and it's just like, holy fuck. <laughs> the other thing, too, like, again, it's just sort of like poor storytelling because he's sometimes weird about it. Like, I yeah. found a, a chip or whatever, a memory chip. Yeah, yeah. And he turned I, it in. I found one for the Seven Samurai. And it's like, do you want to deliver it? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then Die Hardman pops up. He's like, wow, I don't know what to say. This is for me. Thank you so much. I'm like, for you? <laughs> I didn't get this for you. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. And then I did the same thing with, the, I found the God of War soundtrack and I delivered it. And the dorky guy is like, wow, I don't know what to say, Sam. You got this for me. Thanks so much. And I'm like, I didn't get it for you. I just delivered it. I just it. found it on the ground, buddy. Yeah. I didn't know you would be such a fan of it. So Yeah, it's weird. So weird. Um, they introduced a few more things in this section. Yep. So we have to go get... We're supposed to go deliver to the wind farm eventually, but we have to go via... There's what, a, a West distribution center. Distribution center. The West distribution center. So yeah. we get there, and he is like, we need the chiral printer. But yep. it got stolen by mules, which are other humans that are winners. Yeah. And here's... When you when you walk up to this distribution center, you uh, you're like, oh, oh my god, there's a motorbike yeah. sitting there. I could use this motorbike. You yeah. walk up to it, it's like, nah, no nah, batteries, no battery. So we need to get the chiral printer because then we can use the chiral printer to make a what are they called? PT, like a little kit for building things. I don't yeah, know what yeah. it's called. Yeah, it's a, yeah a PT or something. It's like a, a printer, and you can use that to build things, which we did use one earlier because that's another thing. When you went to the other, was it Portnot City? We start over here. We go no, to this a, other there's city. There's another, a, a, like a, a West Portnot distribution. Something. Yeah. I can't remember. So you go there and there's quests to take on. And one of the th- quests is you have to build a post box. Thing. Yeah. And this game is like, we're still sort of in the tutorial section. So rather than having us go build this like post office box on the way to the next destination. You have to go back towards where you came from. I just was like, Oh yeah. my God, why would you do it like inefficiencies? This? Yeah. Like we're still in the tutorial zone more or less. Yeah. And it's like, why are you making it so complicated for us? All right. That is the way station West of capital, not city. Okay. And yeah. port not city is the one that we're going to go to uh, the next okay. time we play. So anyways, on the way. I, so sometimes the game will be like, here's a new thing. We have to pause the game. Someone has to contact you, tell you all about it, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. other times, it'll just be a pop up on the screen that if you're not really reading, you won't see what it does. <laughs> yeah. Because as I'm going up to the mules, I'm like, oh, I know I can tie these guys up, but I have they didn't give me any tutorial on how to tie these guys up. Like, what's the deal? Yeah. And then I'm walking up and I'm paying attention to the surrounding. I'm like, oh, there's a note in the bottom right telling me, oh, if you want to tie him up, you got to equip the strand, hold LT. And then when you get near him, you press <laughs> triangle or whatever, and you'll you'll tie him up or whatever. And I was like, oh, my God, I almost missed it. And it's not small either. The pop up <laughs> is like pretty big. Yes. But I'm looking at like where I got to walk and all this shit. Yeah. Right. So I was like, OK, I can tie these fools up. I. uh I didn't uh, tie anybody up. No? I just went through. And did you punch them or what? Uh, no, I just snuck up, opened the mailbox, grabbed the grabbed the kit, and got and out. And then left? And you didn't get left. anything else? No, I didn't bother. Oh, my God. I was God. like, oh. Well, I did take uh, some missed deliveries out of there, but oh, I didn't yeah. take anything else because I'm like, I, I hate being over 100 kilos and just yeah. huffing it back. Yeah. I'm like, no, give me speed. I don't want to be walking this entire distance oh, yeah. inefficiently. I I locked, I tied them all up, left them to die, and then uh, <laughs> I took everything they had. Yeah. Because when you tie them up, it'll be like whatever's on their shoulder, like, pops off onto the ground. <laughs> so I got, like, some ladders and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you but, were complaining you had too many ladders. I did. All of a sudden, I had, like, four <laughs> ladders on me. Anyways, I took all this stuff and I delivered it all. Um, Very good. But I tied them all up. Uh, did you get the, I think there was a memory chip in there. The I know that memory chip was in the tunnel way up the thing. I didn't, uh, Oh, you must've went in a different way to get in there. Cause I went on the, through the tunnel on the way in and on the way out. I went the same no, way. I went, I went through the tunnel on the way in mm-hmm. and on the way out. I went, uh, outside. Oh, okay. 
I mean, I don't think it matters that you didn't get it, but I don't think that so was either. the God of the War soundtrack, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so then we get the chiral printer. Now we can collect chiral crystals. Another thing I was told by one of the mosh when I was streaming it is that for every thousand centigrams of chiral crystals you carry, your weight goes down by one kilogram. Oh, so he carries around 25,000 centigrams <laughs> Holy. and his weight limit is he it's like he carries 25 oh, wow. kilograms less. Yeah. OK. So I was like, oh, interesting. Time, okay. to, time to slurp those bad so boys up. It's if you read the little note about the crystals, it sort of implies that because it'll say like, oh, the or maybe it's not even the note. Maybe it's when the nerd guy calls you. Yeah. He'll be like, oh, these crystals are weird. Like. You know, it's like they travel through time and they reverse gravity and they <laughs> don't weigh enough and blah, blah, blah. So it's like he sort of implies like, hey, maybe it does something. But yeah. These damn cryptic things. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because then you discover it. It's almost like the schoolyard discovery of back in the day where it'd be yeah. like, did you? I went to Minus World in Super Mario Bros, <laughs> bro. It's like a secret. Did you know that Mew's underneath the truck? <laughs> <laughs> so there's just so much. There's just so much dialogue that doesn't yeah. matter yeah. in the game that I just kind of like I tune it out kind of. Yeah. It's like it just doesn't really it matter. Reminds but me then of, like there's stuff that does matter. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, frig, I miss that. Yeah. It reminds me a bit of in Yakuza as well, because they do that where they'll have conversations and it'll be like, oh, this conversation is about 15 lines too long. Yeah. Like you could have cut out half of the replies back and forth to each other. <laughs> yeah. Which is the same as in this one, because I'll be just like, oh, God, shut up. <laughs> and then it unlocks like the emails with the data so then you can read all these emails guys are writing you and, and then, there is stuff in there yes that you can do for yeah. the people and they'll give you likes if you read their email yeah. and stuff like that but then there's also like the encyclopedia where every time you do a quest it'll be like oh we've unlocked a new encyclopedia about egyptians mythology about death and it's like <laughs> i guess that like, must have great. something to do with the story of the death stranding but <laughs> do i want to read it i don't know <laughs> anyways part of this is we have to take a thing to the wind farm so they can get power going to all the other people on the chiral network because yeah. again another thing they say is that they can transmit energy through the beach at zero loss yes so you can get it to anywhere you want that's on the chiral network with a zero loss of energy it's all the chirillium in the atmosphere it's something for sure so that uh the beach to all that black sand that must just be all chirillium yeah, maybe. So I was speculating. I was like, that's ah, just all ma it must be but all magnetite. But is magnetite just chirillium? But isn't it what the hell? chirillium golden? Because oh, when you deliver golden. the chirillium to the yeah, thing, the chirillium so, crystals are golden. <laughs> so that's again one of the things is like it doesn't really tell you sometimes what you're supposed to do. So yeah. I got to a point where it was like, I know I can take a quest, but it's not letting me take it. <laughs> and it was because I hadn't delivered chirillium yeah, yep. to the thing. So I. It's like you can deliver chirillium. You can choose how much you deliver. So I delivered one centigram <laughs> because I wanted to keep as much as I can yeah. because of. Yeah. yeah. So I deliver it. And the, guy, the guy's like, oh, you delivered one centigram. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Maybe next time you'll give us a bit more. <laughs> I know. I just delivered him everything I had. Here's like 200 centigrams. Yeah. Or I, is it chirillium grams? Oh, maybe. Ooh. Well, I, at first I thought it was cubic centigrams or some or cu cubic grams i don't know what i thought it was i would Anyways. imagine it's centigrams yeah once mosh said that he's like i think it's centigrams i'm like yeah yeah i think you're probably right because he had said something where it was like every he said something like a hundred somethings equals tw uh, one kilogram mm -hmm. and then i did the math and i was like no it's not exactly right but then yeah i think i had it wrong so Anyways, we get the wind farm on and then coming down from the wind farm, there was some deliveries for uh, action figures I found to go to Luden's fan. Oh, uh, and I'm assuming you didn't go to Luden's fan. No. So I've you, been like Luden's fan. I, I'm, I, I've got the map up in front of yeah. me so I can see the names and like you go past that place yeah. several times. So I didn't even know it was there. If you look on the map next time you play, yeah. you'll see on the chiral network. There's like black squares you haven't filled in yet. Yeah. So if you go up to Luden's fan, it's not that's not what the place is called. The guy is a Luden's fan. Yeah. Because you're delivering these Luden's action figures to him. Mm -hmm. But when you go there, 
they get added to the chiral network. Yeah. Because it's a place and you can yeah, like yeah. scan your thing, right? But I'm up there and I'm like, the guy's like, oh, I really like the Ludens. Thanks for this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that's Jeff Keeley. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Keeley's the Ludens fan because oh. I knew that he was in the game. Yeah, because there's a bunch of people that they scanned. Because eventually we're going to see Conan O'Brien in the game. Yes, um, and it's like, oh yeah, Jeff Keeley's in this game. So yeah, he's the Ludens fan. But I delivered the Ludens up to him. I took the bike all the way there. Of course. Too. So the bike is like a game changer. Oh yeah, I charged it up and it was just like. So I wanted to get to the Ludens fan, and there's another like mule base that i didn't do where you're supposed to recover some stolen documents from mm-hmm. mules but i was like i'm driving up to the ludens fan and i'm like oh i'm gonna end up going through this mule base and they spot me coming and they're all trying to shoot me but i just fucking burnt through there on the bike and i'm like can i hit these guys and i just drove the one guy over and he went flying I'm like, oh i can hit them cool but then i have like I'm carrying like 120 kilograms of shit on my back. Oh, yeah. I just drive all the way up to the other so place, beautiful. deliver it. I drive all the way back to Port Knot City and stop. And that's where I stopped playing. I obviously. am so glad yeah. that you got that bike this early. I, mean, I was like, I was, well, the first time I was playing, I'm like, oh, my God, this is bullshit. Just yeah. having to walk everywhere. Yeah. And little, and all the leaves. This isn't going to be fun. But because we're being forced to play through a little bit more, yeah. as soon as you get that bike, it's like, oh, game changer. So coming up shortly. Have you ever played beyond this part? No, I, I've only done the wind farm and that's it. Oh, okay. Well, I won't spoil it then. But anyways, part of the thing we've been told now is that he, they're like, Hartman's like, oh yeah, your blood did do something. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but yeah. When you come back to Port Knot City, we're going to give you a prototype. Yep. Yep. I, uh, I'm, I'm actually there because I did a bunch of deliveries back to Capital Knot City. Okay. I'm there too, but yeah. I haven't you know picked up the yeah i haven't i haven't picked up the main story quest so yeah when i got there i was like it's like delivery 14 i'm like oh shit yeah yeah. i need to go back and get delivery 11 12 and 13 yeah yeah. (laughs) um so we're gonna have to you're gonna be trying out your new yeah grenade so yeah i I was watching you because i didn't try out grenade point oh yeah but I watched you try grenade so, point oh, and you didn't do anything. Well, I'm thinking it maybe distracted the BT so it couldn't find me as easy. Which is okay, I, yeah, fine. Maybe. I don't know. I couldn't tell because there was BTs everywhere. So it wasn't like it, you know, seemed to do anything. Yeah. But the next grenade will not will be different. It's not the same, anyways. You should yeah. definitely try it out. Um because I've played up until um <laughs> what was i saying oh yeah i've played up until the next city yeah port not city port not city no it's not port not city is it what's the first city called uh i thought that was port not city capital oh capital not city. capital not city right okay yeah i've played up until port not city yeah and that's as far as i've been in the game basically so um though i am wondering like Sam can't die. I wonder if you can ever get a game over by just causing void outs everywhere. (laughs) Because when I played it last time, I did cause a void out. Yeah. And it just put a giant crater (laughs) in the map of where I died. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I don't know if it can do anything like that, but. Yeah, maybe. It was pretty crazy when I came to and I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> we'll have to do a void out percent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all void out run. All, all void out run. Just void out yeah. the entire map. Um, Yeah, the graphics are still the game looks so good. You go, even going through the wind on the way to the wind valley. I was like, man, it looks so good. Yes. Yeah. The. The skin textures yeah and the plastic neatness of everything still bothers me yeah and some of the animations are just not good still yeah like i posted a picture of, of uh oh die hardman or hartman hardman just crouching, crouching down. down well it's probably, just like popping a half squat I'm it's like probably because they've mo-capped it with a regularly sized man <laughs> yeah and just, it looks so yeah not they should have had real. like a fat man doing his <laughs> yeah. motion capture because they wouldn't have squatted down yeah. like they there's no reason for him to squat down there. No, it's it's like they're squatting down like he's, you know, a teenager on the ground having a tantrum. Mm-hmm. But it just looks bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. 
there's another chiral network location that is in here that we haven't gotten either. Yeah, I saw it on the map. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I might do that. We'll see. Um, I don't know how far we're going to play. I, I would time. imagine we will play the rest of this episode. Amelie. Yeah, Amelie. So we'll do orders 11 through 17. Yeah, probably. I mean, you don't have to do all the orders. That's the thing. Yeah. It's only the golden orders. Excuse me. Sorry. The only the ones have like the golden strand behind them that are like story based have to do ones. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah. yeah. Just do uh, orders 11 to 17. I mean, I know what happens in the next section. So I don't I could say play to this part, but then it's like a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, you could still say it. Play play like to, up to which order? Because you could, well, you could go think, through the order. Well, it's not an see. order, but I would say like maybe play until uh, after a boss battle. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> That's uh, that doesn't really spoil anything. Yeah. So because uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Not a clue. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you have no clue. Oh, uh, since we did literally none. Um, oh, I guess that was the first episode. Never mind. I'm not going to bring it up. <laughs> we already okay. talked about it, probably. I was Sounds just going to say you can see Kojima in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he's one of the BT guys pulling them into the ground at the start. Oh. You'll see a guy wearing like Wayfair sunglasses coming out <laughs> of the goop. That's Kojima. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm liking it. Hopefully the story gets a little less ham fisted. Yes. I don't think so. There are so many hams on so many fists and they're just feeding yeah. it to you. Exactly. The entire time. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see anyways. Yes, we will see. And that's going to be the end of this episode. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and uh, just let us know how we're doing. If you want to play along in the uh, game club, you leave a there's you can join us live on twitch.tv for slash stream void pod or yep. join us in the purple Room studios discord link down below. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, if you want to support this podcast, patreon.com forward slash stream void. Pod. Yeah. The only way to support this podcast with your hard earned do it, dollar it bitch. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wow. Aggressive. Sorry. And with that being said, we'll see you guys again in one week's time. Bye. Bye. Bye.